I'm Norm Duncan. I'm the facilitator for the Understanding the New Testament course, and I am so glad that you've chosen to be a part of it. You're doing a great job, and I just want to talk to you about a few things. First of all, I want to address the issue of the synoptic problem that um, De Silva talks about in the book. We have the synoptics, which are the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Now, these Gospels, uh, the question is, when were they written and how do they relate together? Um, which was written first and, and why do so much of the, the content look similar? And then why are there parts of the content that does not look similar? So how does how that relationship work out? We know that Matthew was one of the original apostles. He was called Levi. He was a, a tax collector or publican. We know that Mark or John Mark was a disciple of Peter and followed Peter to Rome and basically wrote his gospel from the teachings and instructions of Peter, uh, either during his life or or started before he died and then finished after he died, or it was all written after he died. There's some confusion there. And then we have Luke, who was the companion of Paul and followed Paul. He was also a doctor. He was a scholar. And he chose to write um, a, and do an investigation into the life of Paul. And then we also know that he wrote the book of Acts, um, also as part of that investigation. And so how do these three books interact as they, um, as they were written? In the 19th century and in the 20th century, there was this higher scholasticism, higher criticism that started in uh, basically Germany um, and uh, some other places around the world. Uh, and so out of this scholasticism, we've developed form criticism, redaction criticism, literary criticism, and source criticism. The goal of all these criticisms by these 19th century scholars was to try to get back to the heart of what Jesus actually said, what Jesus actually did. The idea is that we fabricated some mythology of Jesus, that Jesus may have said and done some things, but we added to it later to make it sound greater, to make Jesus look better. And so they want to, it's called the quest for the historical Jesus to get back to who he really was before all the myths of the miracles and, and um, before we added all the great things uh, that, that Jesus did. Now part of that source criticism comes out and we have what's called the two document theory, the four document theory, and Streeter's solution to the synoptic gospels and where this information came from. And so the idea is, what they say is, because Mark is the shortest, form criticism, the shortest had to be the first, and because Matthew and Luke look so much like Mark, that Matt, the, or Mark had to be the first one. And so we start off right here, that we have the, the Gospel of Mark uh, that, that influenced the writings of Matthew and the writings of Luke. But then the question comes along and says, but wait a second, um, why do, are there other parts of Matthew and Luke that Mark doesn't include? Uh, I forgot to mention that one of the reasons they say that Mark was first is because it doesn't include the, um, the genealogy of Jesus. And obviously if Matthew and Luke had been first, the genealogy of Jesus would have been included in Mark. It's not, therefore Mark was first. But where does the other information for Matthew and Luke come from? Well, they've come up with the idea that there's a document called Q, another gospel. Q is German for quella, which just means source. There's another source. And that source is what provides to Matthew and or to, to Matthew and to Luke the other information that is not in Mark. And that's what's referred to as the two document source. The four document source is that in addition to Mark, in addition to uh, Q, Matthew also had his own experiences, his own oral traditions that was added into what is what later became Matthew. Matthew had his oral tradition. He had, and I'll add M-A-T-T -T for Matthew, uh, M-A-R-K, Mark, M-A-T-T, -T right there. Now Luke over here also had his oral traditions, and his oral traditions, including Q and also Mark, that's what formed the Luke Gospel. And that is the four-document four theory. And then Streeter had another theory that Matthew was also influenced by Antiochian oral traditions. 
that flew there, that, that flowed into there. And then Luke was also influenced by some other source that provided him the genealogy of Jesus. And they're not sure where that came from. And so Luke was influenced by four different documents. Matthew was influenced by four different documents. And in total, there's, a, there's six different documents. This all seems credible and legitimate from a type of form criticism, source criticism, redactionary criticism. The problem with all these criticisms is that they only date back roughly 100 to 150 years. And prior to 100 to 150 years, we have roughly 1,850 to 1,900 years of tradition that says differently. In fact, the argument that Matthew should be the first gospel, the reason it's placed first in the canon, is because Matthew wrote it first, and that is supported by much more document that we can trust in terms of the writing of Eusebius. Now, Eusebius lived in the 4th century, but Eusebius did, did work in citing Papias, Origen, Clement, Irenaeus, all of these guys living in the 1st and 2nd and 3rd centuries. In fact, Papias lived in the 1st and 2nd century. He was in, within connecting distance to those writers of the Gospels. Even if, even if he didn't know them, he would have known people who knew them. The documents that Matthew wrote in his original Gospel in Hebrew... Now, this is where De Silva, I believe, falls short, because later they said there's no way that Matthew could have written in Hebrew, and so they suggest that when Papias says that he wrote it in Hebrew, what he meant was Aramaic. And so De Silva, in his writing, says that Papias qu quoted Papias as, in quotation marks, that Matthew wrote in Aramaic, and that's actually not true. It said Hebrew, and he wrote it in Hebrew. There's other sources to say that he wrote in Hebrew. But these guys all attest that Matthew's the one that wrote the first gospel. In fact, Augustine, the great theologian who lived in the 4th and 5th centuries, also attested to Matthew writing the first gospel. Now, there's arguments that Matthew was the first, and Luke was the second, and then Mark was the third of the Synoptic Gospels. But again, that can be discounted by these early traditions, uh, the early writers telling us that first was Matthew, second Mark, and third was Luke. Now, I challenge you to go out and study the research, study the scholarship. I also challenge you to look further back than a hundred years ago. We want to reach as far back and as close to Jesus as we can to validate truth and reality. And so I challenge you to go on the search yourself. Don't just take what I'm saying. Don't just take what De Silva's saying. Go and collect a whole bunch of data and make, a, in, make an informed decision based on scholarship. Now what I did is I took scholarship just basically from four texts to develop this information for you. So I would quote um, uh, Antemeyer, Green, and Thompson, uh, 2000 and 2001, De Silva, 2004, Guthrie, 1990, and Lee. Those are all books, just like De Silva, on understanding the New Testament. It's always important to cite your findings. Now, in your writing, I want to encourage you, not only in your papers, which you're expected to cite sources, but also on your discussion posts. Whenever you're reflecting thoughts and knowledge from the reading, it is critically important that you cite your source. Now, if you're citing a direct quote, you have to use quotation marks. You have to use quotation marks around the statement that they said. You then need to, to cite. And Remember now, I wrote this wrong on the discussion post, but it, De Silva is a small d, e, capital S, I, L, V, A, and then 2004, and then you need to cite the direct page number that comes from, uh, where the quote comes from, and then the period does not go within the quote, but the period follows the, parent, uh, the parenthetical citation. Now, if you're not taking a direct quote from De Silva, what you'll want to do is restate what he said in your own words, 
but you still need to put the citation that the information came from De Silva, 2004, but you do not need a page number because it, you did write it in your own words. It's important in your papers also in the three sources that you're citing from, or minimum of three sources, to have in-note references according to APA. If you're unsure how to use APA, please go to the Writing Center at Southwestern. They would be glad to help you. Or if you have questions for me, please email me or call me. You have that information. And I would be glad to help you out in any way that I can. Again, thank you so much for being a part of this course, and I really hope that the information you're learning is more than just head knowledge, but you're going to be able to apply it to your work in ministry. Thank you, and have a good day.